Good morning, traders. It is February 11th, Super Bowl Sunday. So I want to try and get a video out early because I know a lot of you are going to be going to some Super Bowl parties. We will start with a review of my previous picks so that you can see how they fared. That is the only way for you to judge the accuracy of this system. Then we're going to do some market analysis. I've got a couple of lessons that I want to teach. We're going to get our market bearings and then we're going to use this same systematic approach to find a couple of trades. So a week ago, IBM was a stock that was on our radar. I loved this gap up. But when we get these earnings gaps up to a new high, we don't know if they are real or fake. So here's what we'd like to see. And I explained this last week. We want to see this gap to a large degree preserved. Most definitely, I don't want to see more than half of that gap up given back. And it takes time for these gaps to be digested. Well, what does that mean? That means that you're going to have some natural profit takers, some sellers. They're anxious to unload some shares and to take some of these gains. And you can see that from November, there are some pretty hefty gains from 135 to 195. So these sellers lighten some of the load. Then you also have natural buyers who have watched the conference call for the company. They've read the earnings report. They like what's happening within the company. So as the supply is worked off, digested, if you will, eventually buyers will come in and there won't be any more supply. So they'll have to get a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more aggressive. That means that we start seeing some higher lows. I believe we're starting to see that in IBM and you can visually draw a downward sloping trend line and you can see that this is a bullish flag formation. There's your flagpole, there's your downward sloping trend line. I would like to see IBM get above AVWAP-E. If it can do that this week, I think it's going to be an excellent long. On Wednesday, we did our live event. And I hope that you're able to attend these live events because they are packed with educational content. We do them during market hours and that gives us real time price movement so that we can see what's happening with the market and how the stocks are responding. We also answer all of your questions. So chances are what someone else is asking, you might have that same question. So please make sure even if you're not able to watch the live event, try to watch the recording that we post on our YouTube channel. P-A-N-W. I love this stock. You can see how stock rallied up, got a little bit ahead of itself, and then it pulled back in here. This long red bearish engulfing candle was a sign that if you were long here and you bought this breakout, okay, that's where I want to take profits. So now you get the stock pulling back to AVWAP E. Downward sloping trend line, bullish flag formation, breakout to the upside, nice long green candle finishing on its high. That's where you buy. A little similar to that IBM pattern as far as the bullish flag that we're looking for. Beautiful entry point here, stock rallies up. So now as you get these moves higher, you can see how the stock is continuing to march higher. Pete, how do I know when to take Gains. How do I know when to exit the trade? Very common question. I just spent two weeks writing an article on that. It's more like a chapter or two in a book with lots of examples. That's going to be in the system on our website and available for members today. I'm actually going to post that article as soon as I'm done recording this video. So you can see the stock continuing to drift up. You've got some tails under body, which is good. It shows that sellers are trying to knock the stock down, but it closes near its high. This is where you would want to start taking profits. Why? Because it's starting to compress. Oftentimes, these compressions can lead to the stock rolling over. It's had a nice run. It's lost some of its momentum and you're getting some sellers. That's why the stock can't advance. It needs to digest gains. So stocks don't go straight up or straight down. They pause along the way. Sometimes those pauses can result in dips. So you take your gains here and then what do you do? 
Well, when you exit the trade, you look at the chart and you think, this is a really nice stock. I want to set an alert right here. So you would double click GTC, double click here, and then an alert would be set. And then lo and behold, this week, you would get an alert that, hey, PANW might be worth another look. It's exactly what happened. I love this compression. This shows you that some of the supply is now being worked off and buyers have to be more aggressive. So they start raising their bids until finally there's no more supply of stock and you get a breakout like this. There's Thursday, there's Friday. You can see that from the live event here, the stock has made a really nice move. We also had a really good market to work with. So that's IBM, that's PANW. For those of you who are new to the YouTube channel, please go back and watch my previous videos. They all start this way. So it's really easy for you to see what my previous picks were and how they did. What my previous picks were and how they did. So what has the market done? Wow, what a rally. You can see how this is a nice little pullback to start the year. This is the first week in January. So there was a little bit of profit taking after a big run up into year end. Blam, one long green candle is all it took to erase four days of selling to start the year. Back above AVWAPQ, you can see how that support held. So we've got a little bit of a compression to start off the year and then we break out in the middle of January. We rallied up nicely. This is where I felt that the market was getting a little bit overextended. What does that mean? Well, if you take a look at something as simple as the EMA8, which I like to look at, every time that the market has a gap, a lot of space between the EMA8, it means that it's run really hard and it's going to take a little bit of time for that EMA8 to catch up. And here we get another breakout. Okay, and you can see how eventually that EMA 8 catches up. So as you're long in here, you ride it until you start to see some horizontal compression. That means that there is some supply. There are some sellers. You can be a little bit more passive in here. So this is where you can get more aggressive because you're starting to touch that EMA 8 and you get your lift off. Okay, now you stick with the positions. Now you start to take gains because you're getting some supply and the EMA 8 starts to catch up. Now, as you start to see all of these gains hold, there are no dips. There are no big drops. There are barely any red candles even. So as soon as we get this red candle right here, okay, well maybe we're gonna start to see a little bit of a dip here. Nope erased immediately. So this is where you get long. You stay long. You can get aggressively long because of the strong trend that's intact. And now you're starting to see some sideways price movement while the EMA 8 catches up. So in here, you're looking for signs of a breakout. We don't quite get one and we need more time to consolidate and we get the AVWAP Q right in here. So this provides a compression zone. Now we get a breakout. Okay, we're near that EMA 8. This is where you put the pedal to the metal. You get in here and you're looking for that. So you want to load up early in here and now you just ride it higher until you start to see a price compression. In this case, you get a long red candle. Where did that come from? Everything looks so dang good in here. And then all of a sudden this red candle. Well, this was all the news that we got a week and a half ago. We had earnings from mega cap tech companies. We had the FOMC statement. We had the jobs report on Friday. So just a ton of news. So in here is where we were taking profits even before we saw any signs of resistance because we had a major news event. We had different major news events happening. So let's be smart about this and let's take some risk off the table. Well, the tech earnings were actually 
very, very good. So now we get an FOMC statement that was pretty well received. We got a gangbuster strong jobs report and the market resumes its rally now that it's caught up to that EMA eight. So again, now you're getting long and you're just kind of riding the move higher. Now to be very honest with you, we've kind of shifted into day trading mode because I feel that the market's getting a little bit overheated, a little bit overextended in here you can see that this is a light volume rally. Volume is very low and we're just kind of ticking higher. And there are certain sectors and groups within those sectors that are performing extremely well. But this isn't a broad based market rally. If we look across all the different sectors, it's really tech that's leading this. And in particular, mega cap tech stocks. So anything chip related, anything AI related has been super, super hot. The internet security companies like PANW have also been doing really well. So while we continue to get this market rally in here, we want to stick with shorter term trades and there's plenty of money to be made day trading these moves. And I'll show you how that works and why that works. This is just a personal preference. Okay, if you bought this breakout right here and you were swing trading, you are doing incredibly well. So you're just riding this move higher until we start to see some sideways movement. That would be a sign of some selling pressure and then the market will compress and then you take your foot off the gas pedal, start taking some profits, make sure that we don't roll over. And then as soon as the market's had enough time to digest those gains, then you start looking for that next breakout and you reload on your longs. So as a day trader, you could say, well, gee, you know, if you got out of all your swing trades here, you're really missing this move. Not really. In fact, you've got this big down day here, which is a Thursday uh, after the FOMC, excuse me, this is the Wednesday of the FOMC statement. This is the Thursday right in here. You could see, how you were able to actually buy much cheaper here. You can see that the close here on February 1st is very near the open of February 2nd. So what did you miss by not holding positions overnight? Yes, some stocks gapped higher and they continued to move. So you would miss out on those, but in general, most of the stocks are going to be doing what the market's doing. They're going to be opening relatively flat. You'll get to evaluate the overnight price action. Lots of opportunities to get long. So then we come in the next day, you've got a lower open here. So again, you're able to get into the market. You're able to get into the market. This was the only day that we kind of missed, which was on February 7th, Wednesday. It was a gap and go, which when you start getting at this type of price level, gaps up are the most dangerous setup that we have for longs because those are typically going to attract heavy selling pressure. You're going to get profit taking on those big gaps up and you'll get a gap reversal. So we had to be very careful on Wednesday. Let's take a look at the 15 minute chart and see what unfolded. So we get this gap up on Wednesday some early follow through, but you can see that within almost the first hour, you get all the gains for the day. So we'll go in and take a look at a five minute chart because this is actually a, this is a very important lesson. So you get your gap up and then the initial temptation to check that rally and try to smack it down. When it can't be smacked down and it finds support and more than half of this gap up is preserved, that's a sign that buyers are supporting this move. And then you get your breakout to a new high of the day. Okay, well, this is where you can start taking long positions because you're fairly confident that this move is going to hold now. Buyers are supporting the market and you get the move higher, but you can see that by 1030, the gains for the entire day are in and then we just start compressing. So these gap and goes, they tend to run their course in about 90 minutes or so, 
These are big gains based on the previous close because you've got the gap up already. And then you've got this early rally where you're still trying to determine whether or not this gap is legitimate or not. You're still worried that this could be a gap reversal. So while you're watching, you get this quick move. Eh, it's over. It's done. Yes, you can find some really nice stocks on a day like Wednesday that were tick, tick, ticking higher. So even though the market was out of gas, these stocks were going to continue to move higher. And let's take a look and see what PAMW happened to do on Wednesday. It also, it continued to move a little bit higher and a little bit longer, but not much. It had kind of exhausted its move as well. So when the market went sideways, so did the stock. The problem with gaps up, especially after you've had a big market run like this, and especially when you're starting to distance yourself from that EMA 8, is that you're going to have selling pressure along the way. And the chance of a gap reversal is very high. So you get a long green candle, maybe a couple of them, and then the bottom falls out. Well, that selling pressure can accelerate very, very quickly because bullish speculators are trapped. Those that bought the open are going to get flushed out and you've got lots of room for the market to fall because it has to fill this gap. As it's filling that gap, the momentum builds and oftentimes sell programs kick in later in the day and you get a really long red candle that creates some big losses for short-term traders. So gaps up right now are not our friend. Gap and goes like this one are fairly rare. So very poor risk reward profile for day trading these gaps up. So your best bet is to wait for that rally to run its course and then to wait for a pullback. Well, here you get a pullback to VWAP. This is not a bad entry point. So you can buy here. You've got another chance to buy here. And then you've got at least a little bit of upside that you can capture. But you do not want to be buying that climax after 90 minutes of a gap and go. You're going to get a pullback. Sometimes it comes an hour and a half after the high. Sometimes you might have to wait until midday. But eventually you're going to see a little bit of profit taking and that'll be your entry point. You already know that this move is being supported based on the price action. So what do we like? What's our best setup? Well, our best setup is a gap down. We want to make sure that that gap down is not huge, like nothing more than 30 points or so. You can use a one ATR as a guide. And I think that's about 40 S&P points right now would be one ATR. So anything less than that. And the reason that we like those formations is because a gap down gives us an opportunity to buy at a good point and it gives us an opportunity to join the longer term uptrend. So those are all desirable things. We know that there's a lot of buying taking place right now. We want that stiff tailwind at our back. So on a market pullback, we can also identify relative strength much easier. Well, how is that possible? Well, when the market is pulling back, the strongest stocks are going to tread water. They'll be unchanged for the day. Some of them might even be a little bit higher. As soon as that market support is formed, we wait for confirmation, we could take a starter position. And then as soon as we get follow through off of the low, and the market gets through the high of the day and it's starting to enter that gap, then we can add to the position. We can add to the position. So really nice risk reward profile and it gets us on to this longer term market uptrend. So the point that I'm trying to make is be very, very careful on gaps up. Many of them will reverse, especially when we have this distance between the EMA 8 and look for gaps down because those are our best setup. Another decent setup is a pretty quiet, flat market open. Doesn't really go up much, doesn't go down much. It's just mixed candles back and forth. Okay, well right now, a market that would open flat, say Monday morning, is okay because 
It shows us that there's not a lot of whap, 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 profit taking, taking place right away. So we kind of wait for the bid to be confirmed. Market still looks pretty decent. And then we're able to take our time and find stocks that are moving higher. Those are the ones that are going to be leading the charge. So when the market's still waffling around trying to find its footing, these stocks are march, march, marching higher. And uh, the patterns that you want to look for and the stocks that you want to look for, and I've just written about this extensively, is you want to find the grinders, okay? The explosive stocks that move higher, they may look great in the first 10 minutes of trading, the first half hour of trading, there they go. Oh, the first 45 minute period, you get these tall stacked green candles. Well, most of that move is exhausted very early in the day. So you don't get that much more upside to the trade. So this is a great example. You've got PANW. On Friday, we had a gap up like I showed you. And it was a gap and go. Let me go back to that five minute chart. You can see you've got your gap up, so not a monster gap. So this one, we didn't have to fear too much because you can see, yeah, it opened a little bit higher. Now we did have major psychological resistance at SPY 500 or SP, uh, ES 5000. You can see how the SPY rests here for a bit. But this is nice orderly price action. We were able to pick up on this early in the day. And I said, you know, a lot of tails, a lot of wicks, but we are making progress, higher lows. This is pretty good. So we hit some resistance and now we get the pullback and VWAP holds. All right, this is your entry point. Well, for stocks like PANW, by the time we've waited for this, so we're looking midday, 11.50, 12 o'clock. 11.50, 12 o'clock, you've got the stock is not gonna go anywhere because it's already made this kind of move. Big move. So now it just kind of compresses the rest of the day. It's done. Well, these moves are very, very hard to buy because you get these stacked green candles. The very first thing that you should ask yourself is, why is this company worth so much more today than it was yesterday? What is that news? What do these guys do? Sometimes you're going to find that there are some really wimpy companies. You know, I'll just, you know, say General Mills, for instance, that stacks some long green candles. These guys are food producers. They didn't discover a cure for cancer. Why is the company worth so much more today? It's not. It's just a temporary technical move. So when you get these stacked green candles, and some of these stocks could be even the dogs or the laggards. Uh, crypto stocks would be a good example. Uh, solar panel companies where you get stack long green candles and what looks like maybe even a breakout on a D1 chart. Oh my God, everything looks great. What happened? So everybody rushes in and they buy it and then the bottom falls out because it was just all fluff, just technically driven. So when you have these gaps up, you don't want to be chasing them because a lot of the move is already exhausted. What you want to be looking for is nice, consistent, price action. Stocks that have not made a big gap up. And the reason for that is that you have lots of opportunities to buy all day. So while we're still trying to figure out what is going to happen, so you've got this compression and you've got this Confirmation of support at VWAP. Okay, this is where we want to be looking for a stock that's tick, tick, ticking higher. And the advantage to that is that the stock is kind of making its moves early, but now you get this breakout to a new high of the day, and this happens to coincide with what the market's doing, long green candle. Okay, you can get on this move, and you know that you're not chasing. 
and the stocks had plenty of time to digest the market gains for the morning. You've got a higher low and a nice breakout here. Okay, now you get into the trade. You can even start adding to the trade as the market makes a new high. It gets through that psychological barrier of 500. It's tick, tick, ticking higher. As long as the market looks good, and I'd also mention this in the chat room, what we didn't want is we didn't want long green candles like that one. Why not? I'm bullish. I got long positions on. When the market puts in a long green candle, I'm happy. Because these grinds higher, where the market never gets ahead of itself, can last a very, very long time. And they don't shake you out of the position. But as soon as you get these long green candles, you're going to attract some profit taking. So if you're just kind of riding the trade higher, I see a long green candle like this. I am going to take some money off the table. I get a nice red candle that breaches half of this long green candle. I'm taking the rest of the gains because this has been an incredible move. Now, if you get a long green candle and then you get a doji and another green candle or a couple of green candles, okay, well, all the gains have held. We're going to continue to move higher. Typically, these long green candles can be a buying climax. And if they are going to reverse, they're going to do it immediately because the sell, sell, sellers are in there hard and you want to exit on these long green candles that start to give up more than half of that body. So those are just some tips on how to trade the market, but you're looking for grinders. And I'm trying to see if there are any stocks that might have fit that bill. Uh, this is even not bad. You got a couple of stack candles. You come down to VWAP and now the market's starting to get its footing in here. You take out a new high. Okay, this has still got some pretty decent upside to it. So look for those grind grinders that have not made a big opening move higher, did not gap up much, and instead of a skyrocket higher, you want a nice, like a 30 degree angle. Almost what you see VWAP doing here. And so the stock just keeps grinding, grinding, grinding higher. All along the way, you have confirmation. Every time that the market has a couple of red candles and the stock continues to tick, tick, tick higher, you can add to the position because once these red candles are reversed and once you start to see that nothing organized comes of this market decline, Okay, we have support. Okay, now we're starting to move back higher and the EMA 8 is holding. Now I can add to one of these grinders. And all along the way, I don't feel like I'm ever chasing the stock. It's oblivious to what the market's doing. So it's very easy for me to add to those positions. And then when you finally start to see that climax in the market, well, that's when you start to take profits on a stock that's tick, tick, ticking higher. And if the stock doesn't even flinch with this kind of price action, well, then you can ride the remainder of the position because it is on a mission. Let's take a look at some stocks that are coming up right now. Uh, so as far as my overall market analysis, I'm bullish. I've been bullish since the middle of October. This is an incredibly powerful move. Hardly any dips, hardly any retracement. We're going to continue to float higher. This is a very light news week. We have CPI and PPI, which really haven't meant as much as they did a year, a year and a half ago, because inflation is starting to subside. The one thing that's not going to bear out in those numbers, which I feel is very important, is wage inflation. We saw a 0.6% increase in hourly wages during the last jobs report. That is hot. It's also very important because wages are the largest input cost for manufacturers. So that is inflationary and the Fed is going to be watching that very closely. We had uh, Jerome Powell on 60 Minutes a week ago. He basically said, we're not going to cut rates until May at earliest. And you had a number of other 
Fed officials come out during the week and yes, three rate cuts are possible this year. Well, be careful what you wish for because everybody wants a rate cut. They want a rate cut. They want a rate cut. Oh, the market's addicted to easy money. A rate cut would be phenomenal. My God, if we get a rate cut, the market could go to 6,000. When the Fed starts to cut rates, it's going to raise some eyebrows. People are going to start wondering, why is the Fed raising interest rates or cutting interest rates? There's no sign of economic deceleration. Why are they doing this? Usually they're going to be preemptive and they're going to try and head off a recession. And as soon as they start to cut rates after very progressive tightening, everyone's going to wonder, well, what does the Fed see that we don't see? Did they wait too long? How bad is this really going to get? So my experience has been that some of the best market rallies that we've seen have come in a relatively high interest rate environment because the economy is clipping along. It can shoulder those higher interest rates. So as soon as we start to cut interest rates, it could be a sign that there is a recession coming and we don't know how deep that recession might possibly be. As long as job growth is strong, ISM services, services sector, very important because that's 80% of our economy came out about 53.6, as I recall, that is squarely in expansion territory. And so some of the headwinds that the market's currently facing right now, domestically, everything is clicking on all cylinders. That is not the case in Europe. Europe has absolutely flat growth. Negative 0.1% growth in Q3, flat in Q4. So in the US, when we're looking at 3.3% GDP growth, that's a good number relative to what else is happening around the world. China, their market has been abysmal. They're having issues. They've got a little temporary bounce because the Chinese government uh, is banning short sales. And you can see, this is what China's market has done. <laughs> that is not a good trend. So steadily down, property developers having lots of issues, a lot of potential credit issues. Well, perhaps some of that money is finding its way into our market because U.S. stock market is the best game in town right now, which by the way, for all of you who are watching this video, for all of you who trade the U.S. market, U.S. stocks represent 50-50% of the world's market cap. So this is where all the action is. This is where the liquidity is. This is how we can enter and exit trades with very tight bid ask spreads and we can take advantage of some of this upward price movement. I believe we're going to continue to see this upward price movement. I am more in a camp of hit and run, stick to day trading. We're able to capture almost all of these moves higher. So you can see this day was a flat day, didn't have really much going on. We were able to catch some of those really powerful stocks. Then on Friday, as I showed you, we opened pretty close to where we closed the prior day. Prior days closed the open on Friday. Did we miss a lot of upside by focusing on day trading? No, we didn't. And we still have the flexibility as well to add to positions during the course of the day, to take profits and to go to cash at the end of the day, knowing that we're getting a little bit far from the EMA 8 so I would be looking for a compression this week, a little sideways movement. Perhaps Monday we'll get a nice little pop higher, but then some of this excitement will start to wane and we'll start to compress and digest the last leg of this rally right in here. And we could spend a couple of weeks doing that. So that's what I'm watching for. If you start to see sideways price movement and you're long a lot of swing trades, take some profits. You don't need to stay in them. And then just as I showed you earlier, you put an alert at the high of the market or the high of the stocks that you've exited. And when they breach that 
on the upside and we get the next leg higher, you'll get those alerts and you'll be ready to take action. So we're gonna take a look at some stocks today. One of them I like for day trading. I like what I saw last week and that stock, I'm gonna go into Green Royal Flush and we're gonna go down to Microsoft. We can look at all these charts. I'm just gonna flip through a bunch of charts and I'll show you what I like, I'll show you what I don't like. Most of these I'm gonna like. When I go into Green Royal Flush, I can click through the top 10, 15 stocks on this in any given day and I'm gonna find my stocks that I wanna trade because it's that good. It's got a buy signal across every time frame. So MSTR, nice breakout here through AVWAP E, long green candle on heavy volume and big follow through. I would not chase that, but definitely a nice breakout. We saw that on our searches here on Thursday. Obviously we saw MSTR on Friday as well. Beautiful compression, nice breakout. I like LRCX easily could be my pick of the day. So here you get this gap higher, and this is the kind of grinder that I'm talking about. I was looking for one of these and now I found it. So you get this steady price action, high or low. Okay, the market's still figuring out what it wants to do. Let's put an SPY overlay because this is going to illustrate what I'm talking about very, very nicely. So SPY. So now we've got this stock. It's just in a very orderly price pattern. Not a lot of red candles, tiny bodied candles, none of this stacked skyscraper long green candles where the stock gets way ahead of itself. Those are dangerous because those are going to attract profit taking. No, we want tick, tick, tick higher, just like this. So the market goes through its little bid check here and it pulls back and it tests the VWAP while it's doing this. What is this stock doing? Is it giving back its gain so far for the day? No, it's not. It's ticking higher. Nice. New high of the day. I'm going to take a position here because I suspect that the market is going to find support. Suspect that the market's going to find support? How can you suspect anything? I suspect it based on this price action. I suspect it because of the D1 chart. This is all telling me you want to be long. You want to be long. And this price action is telling me that this opening gap higher is supported and we are tick, tick, ticking higher to a major resistance level. Now we get this pullback to VWAP in the SPY, but this stock is not pulling back. So now we've got market support and a new high for the stock and the market starting to bounce off of VWAP. This is where you add to the position. Now we have confirmation and we have a new high for the day in the market so hey, this stock should participate. So we can add here when the market makes a new high. One, two, three, we've got three times the position on and we don't have to worry about big profit taking because we don't have any stacked green candles. And that is what gives us staying power. Because as soon as we get those long green candles, we've got to worry about profit taking. Well, as the day unfolds, you can see that the market starts to get into a buying climax here. And there's your long green candle. Like I told everyone, this is what you want to watch for. When we get that, that's going to be a buying cl climax. Take gains. Well, this was at, let's take a look, 240 and... This is going to happen around the same time. In fact, when the market put in this long green candle, you would have expected another long green candle and perhaps another here. Didn't happen. It's still trying to hold these gains. This is where you get out. You start to see price compression and the momentum has started to wane. Really nice gain. Easy trade. Grinder. So as I go down the list, uh, let's take a look at a few other stocks. SMCI, finally nice, really good breakout and solid. 
follow through right in here. So very, very strong stock, getting a little bit overextended, probably gonna see a dip in here somewhere, at least a compression. We need that pause, then we need that breakout of the compression. Then it'll be good again. ASML, beautiful. Gap up, tick, 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 higher on a daily chart. So I'm gonna go down to Microsoft because I really like the price action on Microsoft. You can see how this is a post earnings reaction. Sold off, sold off. Here's your AVWAP E. The stock has been able to hold the AVWAP E. Then last week, Wednesday, we had a nice tall green candle. And this is the way that you like to follow through. Long green candle, all the gains preserved, new closing high, and then a doji, which is fine because it shows that all the gains held. Remember how I said I want to see half of those long green candles preserved? All of it was preserved. Then Friday, we get the decent market move and the stock rallies. Same thing with Microsoft. Early in the day, you get this powerful move right in here. Most of the gains were already realized in the first two hours of trading, and then the stock just flatlined. Here's one thing that I really liked about Microsoft, and here's why I believe it's going to continue higher Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday, we're going to do another live event, so make sure to watch for that. Late in the day, you get this round of profit taking in the overall market. Now, these are going to be your short-term traders who are exiting their positions because they've made money. Just like we've been day trading, we were looking for an exit point, and this spike, this last buying, buying climax, was our time to get out. Again, mentioning this to members in the chat room that we're going to be seeing some late day selling, so make sure that you take some profits on your day trades. As the market sells off, what does Microsoft do? It holds all of the gains for the day and it closes on its high. Well, this tells me a couple of things. Day traders didn't necessarily hang on to this stock till the end of the day. Why? because the gains had already been realized earlier in the day. So if I'm day trading Microsoft and I'm watching the market come down and test VWAP, and then I see the market rebound beautifully, I want to see this stock making a new high, 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 run, 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 higher. That's what I'm expecting Microsoft to do. Well, as you start getting a good way through this market rally, and you're getting nothing out of Microsoft, well, I'm going to take my gains and I'm going to go find a stock like LRCX that still has lots of upside, eBay. Those stocks still have plenty of upside moves. So that's where I'm going to shift to. That horse that I rode early in the day, it's tired. It's time to get a fresh horse. So that's what a lot of day traders do, but you're going to have a lot of day traders hanging out of the position in hopes that at some point Microsoft is going to break out. You're going to get another really nice leg higher and you don't have to worry that the bottom of the market is going to fall out because it's been super strong. And so at the end of the day, you're going to get some bullish speculators exiting Microsoft and taking profits and that selling pressure which we should have seen along with the market would drive the stock down well when it doesn't it means that all of these short-term sellers all these day traders all the supply that they're bringing to market is being gobbled up by longer term investors and that tells me that they still want to be in Microsoft and that tells me that they probably are still going to be active this week. And so Microsoft has had this nice little compression right here near the all-time high post earnings. We've got about eight days since that earnings announcement and a nice little breakout in the stock. So I believe Microsoft is going to continue to drift higher. So given that the market is extending itself, 
And given that I'm looking for a compression in here soon, not a big drop, but at least a compression, more sideways price action, I want to try and sell some out of the money puts. I want to try and generate some income. I'm going to be day trading and on my swing trades, I'm going to be looking to stay fairly flexible and fairly passive. As I go down the list, a lot of the crypto stocks, uh, MSTR is one, Coin is another one, Mara is another one. And so in this particular instance, when I take a look at the breakout above AVWAP E, this is a nice little pullback. We have support well above two major moving averages. This is the 100 in blue and the 200 in black. Really nice stuff. Horizontal breakout, got the 50 day moving average in here. All right, this is good stuff. This I can lean on. I can sell an out of the money put all the way back down here and generate some nice income off of it. So let's go in and take a look at what might be setting up. I don't want to be out there for a lot of time and I don't need to be because the stock has a lot of option implied volatility. So the first thing I need to do, let's go through this, earnings in March. So I don't have to worry about an earnings announcement anytime soon. And I've got weeks that I can sell these out of the money puts for and try and buy the stock cheaper. I'm going to go to the March 1st expiration and I'm going to go down to this $19 price point. So for margin purposes, I'm going to have to put up 20% of the underlying price of the stock to sell these puts naked. Okay, so if I sell those puts, I've got to put up roughly, let's call it $4 in margin, but I'm bringing in 75 cents. So as far as a return, you're probably looking in the 17, 18 percentile to sell these puts naked and that's the type of return that I can generate in two weeks. But I have to want to own the stock. So my net cost on Mara wouldn't be 19, it would be $18.25 because I can subtract that premium from it. Well, $18.25 puts me well below AVWAP E and actually down to the opening of this or the low of this long green breakout candle. So the way that I look at this is, would I want to be a buyer of a stock that's demonstrated this type of strength, has relative strength, has the potential to move higher? Would I be willing to buy that stock in the next two weeks all the way down here? If the answer is yes, then selling a naked out of the money put on Mara makes sense, but I have to be willing to buy the stock. And that is my intent. My intent is I hope to heck that I get assigned. I'm a buyer. Give them to me. If I don't get that opportunity, if the stock continues to move higher, I'm still going to be generating a 17% return in the course of two weeks. Thank you very much. I'll take that. So that's how I would play it. And you can see that the stock is eh, around $24. We're talking close to $18. That's a $6 move that it would have to make lower in the next two weeks. I view that as a pretty high probability trade, especially given the strength of the market and the likelihood that these gains are going to continue for the next two weeks. What do I mean the gains are going to continue? I'm not looking for the bottom of the market to fall out. There's no news to fuel that type of move. And we haven't seen any dips all along the way that tells us that buyers are scooping up everything they can get their hands on. That's why you don't have any dips is because every time you get even the start of one, like a red candle like this, it gets gobbled up, not three days later, the next flipping day. 
Look how tight that price action is. This is what we are looking for. It's exactly the type of strong trend strength that we want to trade. This is when we can step up to the plate. So yes, day trade from the long side, your best setup is going to be a gap down. Wait for that support, find that relative strength, you get the market gapping down, look for those stocks that have not given back an ounce of the gains. Those are the ones that are going to start clipping higher once the market finds support. Flat opens, we're okay with, okay? Let the market digest gains, let it find its bid, gives you time to find relative strength. You can come in very calmly, you're in control, you can start day trading those super strong stocks. And because you're day trading, you don't have to worry that they've necessarily gone parabolic because you're in, you take your gains and you're out. So you're in cash, you're, you're flexible. The pattern that you need to be very, very watchful for and very, very careful of is a gap up. Do not chase them. Do not chase them. There's a good chance of a gap reversal and you're going to be left holding the bag. Don't be FOMO Joe frothing at the mouth. Oh my God, we got another market high. I got to buy everything in sight in the first half an hour because it's going to go a lot higher by the end of the day. That guy is going to get his head handed to him. You don't see many gap and goes, especially at these lofty levels. And if we do see some gap and goes, then we're going to start to go parabolic here and then we have a chance for a buying climax. I'd prefer not to see that because that brings in a lot of volatility. I'd like to keep this nice little grind higher, compress, 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 grind higher, compress, compress. That's much better than getting a blow off rally with a couple of really long green candles and now you've got some red bearish engulfing candles and you're going to see some pretty hardcore profit taking if we get into a buying climax situation. So we want to just keep this nice grind higher going and we don't have to worry about the bottom of the market falling out until we get a couple of those really big long green candles. And then we could start to see some profit taking and some volatility. Not seeing that in the course of the next couple of weeks. So be very careful on gaps up. Don't chase them. The gap up in the market's going to last about 90 minutes or so. For a lot of stocks, it moved hard early in the day. The gains are in. They're not going any higher. Find those nice, consistent stocks that are grinding higher if we do get a gap and go in here. And then you won't be chasing and you won't be worried. And you'll have plenty of opportunities to add through the course of the day as that market bid is confirmed. So I'm very leery of any kind of gap up right now. And I can tell you a lot of people are going to chase those on the open and they're going to regret that 90 minutes after the open because you're going to start seeing some gap reversals. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Don't eat too much. Enjoy the commercials during the Super Bowl. I hope we have a good game. We are going to see you Wednesday for our live event. We'll see you then. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.